Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island. Chris Tucker, not Smokey. The way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood, at one point, you know, being the highest paid actor in Hollywood, yeah. but I, I felt like, you know, it was, it was a ceiling right there, and yeah. I wanted more, it wasn't enough. You knew Jeffrey Epstein, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. I Ever wondered why Chris Tucker isn't in movies anymore? It feels like he just disappeared from Hollywood when he was on top, especially after Rush Hour smashed box office records. And then poof, he's gone. It's pretty weird for a massive star like him to just exit stage left from Hollywood. Cat Williams has a theory. He thinks Tucker got tangled up in the dark and sketchy parts of showbiz, seeing stuff that freaked him out. It's as if he got nudged out of the spotlight. You know, once you're out in Hollywood, climbing back up is a steep hill. Cat's convinced that's exactly what went down with Chris. He suggests Chris was exploited, and then kicked to the curb once he was no longer needed. And it all ties back to Tucker's link to Epstein Island. Yep, Chris Tucker was mixed up in that mess, and it's sparking a lot of chatter. Some might question Cat Williams' claim, seeing as he's a bit of a controversial figure, but there seems to be a ring of truth to his words. Reports have been flying around about Tucker's connections with big shots like Epstein. And you know what? Tucker himself spilled the beans. Yep, he had ties with Jeffrey Epstein. Mind-blowing, right? But here's the kicker. With all the scandal surrounding Epstein, being linked to him is the last thing you'd want. It makes you question the hidden dramas of Tinseltown. When you think about Chris Tucker, your mind probably jumps straight to Rush Hour or his killer stand-up gigs. He was on fire in both arenas, literally everywhere at one point. But then while his co-star kept shining, Tucker took an exit. Everyone was scratching their heads, wondering why a star with so much spark would just walk away. Some thought he'd just made his fortune and was done, but Williams hints at a deeper story. It looks like Tucker woke up to the real face of Hollywood. Being at the top exposed him to some shady dealings, and he chose to step back. Chris Tucker's trip from stand-up comedy to becoming a Hollywood legend was nothing short of a thrill ride. He burst onto the scene with his sharp and clean humor on Def Comedy Jam back in 92. Chris Tucker's big break came with his debut in House Party 3, lighting up his career. Raised in Atlanta with a big family, Chris was a natural at cracking jokes. From talent shows to stand-up comedy, he was on a mission to hit it big. By 19, Chris was off to Los Angeles to chase his comedy dreams. And wow, did he make a splash. Hitting stages like Def Comedy Jam and rubbing elbows with icons like Bernie Mac, Chris quickly became a rising star. His breakthrough came with the role of Smokey in Friday, making him Hollywood's newest sensation. As Smokey, he grabbed tons of praise and even snagged MTV Movie Award nods. Chris didn't stop there. He shined in music videos alongside Dr. Dre, Tupac, and Mace. Friday and his character Smokey skyrocketed his fame, thanks to director Gary Gray, who saw his potential from just an okay audition. Gray spotted Chris's killer improv talent, seeing him as the perfect Smokey for Friday. With just $3.5 million in 20 days of filming, the 95 release turned Chris Tucker, Ice Cube, and the gang into icons of a cult classic. It raked in $28.5 million, skyrocketing Chris's fame. His portrayal of Smokey had everyone in stitches, showcasing his incredible comedic gift. However, by 1997, Chris's career took an exciting turn. He dazzled in The Fifth Element, showing he could dominate in big-budget films. On Shannon Sharp's Club Shake, Chris explained the challenges of a Friday sequel, especially with the loss of original stars. Williams pointed out Chris's evolution from his smoky days, then money talks hit the screens, leaving audiences in laughter. And just when you think he's hit his peak, bam, Chris shines in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown, matching up with big stars. Then comes the real showstopper, Rush Hour, with Jackie Chan, pure gold. The Rush Hour series was making money hand over fist, and by 2001, Chris was cashing in big time. While Rush Hour 2 was killing it, Chris popped up in Michael Jackson's You Rock My World video. Then he vanished until Rush Hour 3 in 2007. Rush Hour 3 was hyped up, but honestly, it didn't quite live up to expectations. Just as quickly as he became a star, Chris stepped back from the spotlight. He just disappeared. Since then, Chris has only shown up in two more movies, Silver Linings Playbook and Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk. But come on, a single flop doesn't make someone vanish for over a decade, right? Just two movies since 2010. What's up with that, Chris? Turns out, Chris Tucker was playing it smart. He got super choosy with his roles. He flat out said no to roles in Any Given Sunday, Lethal Weapon 4, and Django Unchained. Brett Ratner, who directed Rush Hour, even let it slip that Chris turned down nearly $100 million in offers. And guess what? Chris himself admitted it, saying he values amazing experiences way more than just piling up money. So Chris Tucker was totally smashing it with the Rush Hour movies, right? Rolling in dough, living the high life. But then he paused and thought, wait a minute, life's got more to it than just being a big name in Hollywood. In a chat with my classics ATL, 
Chris got real about why he stepped back from all the glitz. He felt like he'd hit a wall. Uh, the way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood, at one point, you know, being the highest paid act in Hollywood, yeah. but I, I felt like, you know, it was it was a ceiling right there, and yeah. I wanted more, it wasn't enough. Right. So I stepped back, lived a little bit, traveled the world, and did a lot of humanitarian stuff that really uh, broadened my perspective for right. the world, that, you know, it ain't just about me being the biggest comic or actor in the world, it's about, you know, becoming somebody, somebody to give to the world, you know, inspire in some kind of way. Even though he was the top paid actor around, he was searching for something more meaningful, beyond just the fame and cash, so he took some time off, went on a journey of self-discovery, traveled the globe, and dove into humanitarian work. And just so we're clear, Chris isn't short on money. Celebrity Net Worth says he pocketed a sweet $50 million from rush hour after inflation adjustments. That's around $65 million. So, yeah, he's set. Tucker really stirred things up in Hollywood. Even Fox admitted to being a bit unsettled when Tucker grabbed the spotlight. Outside the club, the door opened. <sighs> Who is that on stage? I said, because I just came up, I'm Jamie Foxx, who could that be funnier than me? And I opened that door, it was a skinny little black dude with a tank top on that didn't fit. It was Chris Tucker. <laughs> and when I say he was murdering them, and it shook me, and I knew that I wasn't funny like that no more. I even, I even was on my way to the comedy store, and you know, in my head, I'm thinking I'm the, I'm, 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 I'm the man, right? And this girl says, oh my God, oh my God. And I was like, what's up? She said, um, do you know what Chris Tucker's performing? I was like, <laughs> Tucker, though, felt trapped. Success in Hollywood often means getting stuck in repetitive roles, and Tucker wanted no part of that. He began declining big money offers that didn't align with his goals, earning labels like picky, but truly, he was just following his own path. Hollywood's habit of not looking beyond his race, offering him the same stereotyped roles, didn't sit well with him. The industry's typecasting kept him from exploring his full potential. So Tucker's appearances became rare, leaving people to wonder if he'd ever return in a big way or if he had faded away. Tucker was navigating a tricky industry, pushing against Hollywood's control and the pressure to conform. Even with his success, he felt unfulfilled, confined by the industry's expectations. Taking a stand, he stepped away, seeking more meaningful pursuits. Tucker opened up in an interview about leaving Hollywood behind, refusing to let the industry control his choices or life. He aimed to be in charge of his own destiny, not tethered to Hollywood's strings. He held firm, turning down major roles that didn't fit his vision. Some fans cheered his steadfastness, while others saw him as just defying the norm. Truth is, Hollywood's resistance to change and lack of diversity were stifling talents like Tucker. They were living in the past, recycling scripts and expecting innovation. No surprise Tucker was itching to leave. Then, there was the financial roller coaster. Living large with a fancy Orlando man until TMZ unveiled his tax woes, and California hit him with a massive tax bill. But Tucker managed to navigate out of that financial storm. Now, Cat Williams is dropping some major hints that Chris Tucker's quick exit could be tied to some shady industry secrets. Williams suggested Tucker might have tangled up with Jeffrey Epstein, that notorious financier linked to a creepy criminal network with Ghislaine Maxwell. They ran this messed up operation from Epstein's private spot in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Epstein's story took a dark turn, ending in a Manhattan jail cell while he was on trial. In a fresh chat on Shannon Sharp's club, Shea Katz hinted at a changed Tucker, suggesting the Chris Tucker we know today might be closer to Epstein Island stuff than to the Smokey from Friday we all love. So as we all look back fondly at Friday, it seems Tucker could be hiding some serious secrets. Tucker's story is a bit foggy. In 2002, he hopped on a trip to South Africa with Epstein, former President Bill Clinton, and Kevin Spacey, all for the Clinton Foundation. But Tucker says he was clueless about whose plane it was. He's adamant he never visited Epstein's island, insisting it was a one-off humanitarian trip. Despite this, there's no concrete proof tying Tucker directly to Epstein's sinister actions, aside from that trip. Yet, some fans are skeptical. They zero in on Tucker's response to questions about the journey, hinting there's more beneath the surface. Bottom line? Slapping a humanitarian label doesn't always mean it's clean. And Cat Williams' allegations? They're not just wild stories. There's real evidence backing them up, sending ripples not just through Hollywood, but across the board. Check out this scandal around Chris Tucker. When Epstein's court documents got unsealed, it sent shockwaves through the elite. Over 100 
170 bigwigs, including stars and politicians, got caught up. With Epstein's arrest, the scramble to uncover the dirty secrets of his island kicked into high gear. Locals have been whispering, claiming he kept bringing underage girls even after his conviction. Eyewitnesses at St. Thomas's airstrip spotted Epstein with girls too young to be jet-setting alone. The flight logs are a wild ride, showing Epstein's jets zipping around the globe. And the celeb guest list? It's like a who's who of the A-list, featuring names like Leonardo DiCaprio, Donald Trump, and Michael Jackson, who was reportedly close to Tucker. And when Cat Williams spilled the beans about Tucker's connection to Epstein Island, it was no mere gossip. This scandal's rocking the entire industry, and as the truth slowly comes to light, who knows what deep, dark secrets we'll unearth about Hollywood's elite. Considering the star-studded names tangled up in Epstein's web, Tucker's invitation to that notorious island doesn't seem far-fetched. Fans are torn over Kat's revelations. Some are convinced there's a scandal brewing, while others are shocked or in denial. Trump and his crew were in Epstein's notorious black book, which got leaked with some names hidden. And yup, Chris Tucker's name popped up too, stirring rumors about why he suddenly left the Friday scene. Still, there are folks out there fiercely defending Tucker, insisting he was clean. Uh, Chris Tucker was buddies with Bill Clinton, doing good deeds with Bono, their ride on Epstein's plane, possibly for a good cause. That seems to be Tucker's only link to Epstein. Guess who's making a comeback? Chris Tucker hitting the big screen in air, a film about Michael Jordan's epic Nike deal. Tucker plays Howard White, the Nike guru behind it all. And it's been a whopping seven years since we've seen Tucker act in a movie. Talking to GQ, Tucker shared his bafflement over people wondering why he's been MIA from movies. He's just as surprised, always keeping busy with stand-up or other projects. It's shocking because I guess I'm the last person to know it, he admitted. I'm always hustling. So hearing that, I'm like, oh, I guess it's been a while since I've been on the big screen. Chris Tucker has been everywhere, diving into diverse projects and championing humanitarian efforts across the globe. His schedule? Jam-packed. And he's not just globe-trotting for kicks. He's genuinely engaging at events, soaking up wisdom rather than just showing up to speak for a paycheck. But here's the kicker. Tucker's aiming for more than endless career grinding. He's chasing a life full of experiences because he knows that's what fuels great acting. I think stepping away and living beyond the industry is crucial, he mentioned. Life inspires art, so you need a rich life to deliver outstanding performances. Despite living it up with all the luxury money can afford, Tucker yearned for more meaningful acting roles. I didn't want to chase cash through meaningless movies. I was after happiness, he shared with GQ. Eventually, I realized I wanted to tackle unique roles, but they weren't coming my way. So I thought, why not explore and live more while waiting? What lights up Tucker's acting spark? Trust, teamwork, and creative liberty in roles. And Air was a goldmine for him. This project offered more than just another role. It allowed him to deeply connect with Howard White, a character he had heard about from his travels. As per GQ, Tucker took the reins on his character's dialogue, personalizing his lines. Flashback to 2001, when Tucker was already itching to pick his roles more carefully. I got bombarded with so many roles. Anything you can imagine for a black actor, they pitched to me first, and I was like, nope, 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 and nope, he shared. And here's the deal. He wasn't about to settle for just anything. To be real, I couldn't find anything worth my time. I used that period for some soul-searching and growing up. I feel young, and I've got plenty of time for movies. I didn't want to rush into projects just for the sake of it, Tucker said. I was looking for roles that I genuinely enjoy. So why did he dive back into the rush hour frenzy for a second time? Well, the $20 million offer was certainly persuasive. But here's the cool part. Chris isn't in the game just to make movies. He's aiming to impart wisdom, paying homage to the classics that moved him, like Casablanca, The Color Purple, and Coming to America. And he's got his sights set on writing a book and rolling out more films. Chris successfully dodged Hollywood's efforts to box him in and dictate his path. And that's a big deal. Cat Williams believes Tucker's climb to success unlocked doors to Hollywood's shadiest corners. If Williams' insights hold any weight, Tucker might have witnessed things that made him take an emotional step back. As we wrap up this saga, it's clear that Chris Tucker's journey has been anything but ordinary. Whether he stepped back for personal growth, to escape the shadows of Hollywood, or simply to seek out roles that truly resonate with him, his story continues to fascinate and provoke thought. Thank you for diving into this mystery with me. Until next time, take care and keep pondering the unpredictable paths of our favorite stars.